Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon for everyone. Uh, thank you to Dr. Garcia who introduced me. I think better than I did because he knows everything about me, especially when I was here at uh, that time when I, I did my PhD under uh, his supervise. In my presentation and this afternoon, I will divide it, uh, my speech in two parts. The first part, uh, my, my, my work in Analyst University as a rector, and the second part uh, as a Deputy Minister of Education. As a rector, I uh, endorse of our activities in which later met Analysis University recognized in Indonesia. Analysis University then out of the blue became the 14th best university in Indonesia at the time. This is a significant activities as a rector. When I came back to uh, my university, our university at that time is very, very small. The number of students still uh, 12,000, now already 30,000. 30,000. When I, I was a rector in another university, I tried to make a more department in, in our university because at that time only 14 departments, now already more than 30 departments in that university. Another uh, significant work I, I did, improving student activity. First, the developing entrepreneurship program for students by inviting former entrepreneurs from all Indonesia to give in a lecture. Because uh, many Indonesian alumni right now want to seek the jobs. Although the, the job the, the, the pension is not available. It, it is why in our college in university, why to provide uh, another another road for the student, for the alumni to become uh, to become uh, the best alumni. It is why we we, we develop the student be entrepreneur for the future. The second one enhances student character building. It is the the main issue also in our country, many students in Indonesia wants to be a demonstrator. And demonstrator, everything, uh, if, they are, if they agree about the, if we don't agree about the, the policy made by the government, they protest. That is why we want to enhance the student uh, character. The third one, Endorsing the collaboration with other universities and institutions uh, in Indonesia and overseas. When I was a rector, I visited this uh, the CERTA office. I met an OU with Dr. Sadiq at the time and also the, with the president of UP in, in Manila. And another activity is expanding this collaboration with other institutions. Uh, overseas and Indonesian institution. In 2009, we conferred the honorary doctor for president of Republic Indonesia. Not all the university has offered that degree, the honor degree to the president has received, uh, he received. Uh, it means that our university was believed by Mr. President as one of the outstanding universities in Indonesia. We gave this honorary doctor to him in 2009. When I was a director, as an academician, I disseminate also SRI, SRI to the Office of Agriculture Office, Public figures and farmers in many district and residencies in in Sumatra. Why why I did my, this talk? Because uh, many area 
product in Indonesia, the, the rice production is very low, around 4.5 uh, tons per hectare. It is why we want to implement SRI in our, our country, especially I started from my province, West Sumatra. Uh, but albeit we occupied with my official duty as a rector, I did also activity related with my, with my, file, my field. I initiated the implementation of SRI in my province. From 2004 till now, I and my team conducted various research projects, training works of socialization of SRI concept, coordinating with provincial government of West Sumatra and many other institutions in, in national level. Why I want to disseminate SRI concept? Because with SRI, I, I want to elaborate this uh, for, a few, for a few minutes because not all of us here knows about SRI, because not, not all of us here in, in this room, in this uh, uh, venue, know about SRI. SRI concept, there are four concepts of SRI. Early seedling transplanting, mostly seven to 11 days old, one seedling for its planting spot, third, wider row spacing, uh, 25 times 25 centimeter, and water management. Not in all, all uh, growing stage of the rice give, uh, giving the, the water. As I concept will be more productive if the two uh, more additional elements provided within the within the, the, the soil will will give the loosening of the soil in, in cooperative of the organic matter. This is a conventional. If we compare with SRI, conventional and conventional rice production, in conventional rice production, let's be transplanting, mostly at 30 days old. A number of seedlings, many more than five uh, seedlings per row uh, per per spot, and water also provided uh, almost all the growth period, and narrow growing space, 15 by, times 15 centimeter, and very rarely imported organic matter. This is our experience in field experiment when I was conducting the the SRI research in our area. You could imagine the, the rice production uh, start from, nine, from 8 ton per hectare to 9.96 uh, ton per hectare. I tried also in new rice field in Sitium, because Sitium is uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, perzolic, uh, red perzolic soil in that area. We try to, to make the new rice field, mostly in conventional methods, we produce only 1.9 ton per hectare. But in SRI, we can get more than 5 uh, ton per hectare. This is uh, our activity when we are doing uh, research and dissemination a program of SRI. This is a harvesting by Ministry of Coordinating uh, Economic uh, uh, of People Welfare and of Indonesia. At that time, uh, we got the year 9.6 ton per hectare. This is harvesting SRI with local variety. We got 9.2 hectare. This is also 9 ton per hectare. This is our collaboration work with uh, Hiroshima University in Japan. They visited our field at the time. Uh, we work together with mayor of the city in Padang and other uh, district in West Sumatra. This is one of international seminar we conducted in Padang. Uh, Norman Apov is one of the foremost uh, researcher who did in SRI project also in. Madagascar in U.S. right now. This is a uh, SRI implementation sponsored by other uh, institution. 
This is our, our project. We teach a farmer how to put the young seedling to spot. And our staff also uh, doing this research in, in the field of the farmer. This is a SRI project also. Yeah. This is my PhD student who did the research in, in SRI. Uh, until now, there are already seven uh, PhD uh, graduate from my institution who did research in SRI. This is uh, the student who, who joined the project. He did by himself uh, how, to, how to put the young seedling in the field and how to preparation the, the nursery of, uh, of the field, how to plant. Uh, the city and everything. And this is uh, management of water. In, in traditional rice, we put uh, we give water to the to the rice, unlike in SRI. SRI the the water only like this. The important one is the uh, water is under uh, fill capacity. This is the harvest. This is mine. I, I used University of the Philippines T-shirt at the time. <laughs> this is our student, our student who joined the, the field experiment. Yeah. Uh, this is a second period of my uh, term as a rector. As has mentioned by has been mentioned by Dr. Garcia as well. In the second period of the rector of Andalas University, I cannot accomplish the time. Because at, uh, in July 2011, I, I was asked by Ministry of Education at the time, Professor Babang Suribio, to be an uh, Inspector General of the Ministry of Education. I only three months in that position, and Mr. President asked me to be a Vice Minister of Education. What have been done when I was a Deputy Minister of Education. As has been mentioned also by Dr. Garcia, we and, and the team in uh, Ministry of Education reformed the curriculum from teacher-centered learning system to the student-centered learning. There are different, this curriculum is very different with the old curriculum because in this curriculum, we teach the student to be, have uh, three competencies. We call attitude, skill, and knowledge. Uh, before in other curriculum, in all the curriculum, most of the students only got cognitive, only has a knowledge. Uh, it's very rarely really, uh, student got uh, skill and also attitude. The new curriculum, uh, very known in Indonesia, curriculum 213, or K213, 2013. Why we reform the curriculum? This is a reason why we reform the curriculum based on the result of the PISA of the, our student. You see, Indonesia, Thailand, Chinese, and Singapore. Most of the students in Indonesia only uh, can answer the question until level three. Until level three. Yeah, level three is. Uh, the, the, the green one. If you compare with other countries, Singapore, China, Japan, they can answer until level five, even level level six, for PISA uh, result. This is also for mathematic result. Yeah, Indonesia is still lower than other country. Yeah, most of the Indonesian student only answer the low level of the question. But most of the uh, students from Taiwan and from Singapore can answer until level six of the, the, the test for the mathematics and also for science and also for reading. It is why we want to reform the curriculum uh, at that time. Uh, if we See also the percentage of the grad student taught the team science topic. In all science, Indonesia only 
touch 67 percent. Uh, if we compare other country, more than 70 percent. Also biology, we touch only 73 percent, and, and so on. And also chemistry, if we compare other country, we are at the middle. If we, com we compare the other country, yeah? Also in in mathematics, in mathematics also like this, we are uh, lower than Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and also if you compare to Singapore, of course. Yeah. Why our result test of the student like that? Because many of the matter in our su at, at subject is not taught in, in our class to the student, like in, in mathematics. Yeah. In mathematics, at the level 4 for elementary school, number of sentence, yeah, uh, you know, uh, thoughts, number of pattern, and geometry step also like that, many. The red one is not been touched to the student at the time. This is a background why we reform the curriculum. Many, many uh, subject in, uh, elementary and junior high school is not complete uh, thoughts to the student at that time. Why we, what is the significant change in a curriculum or in K2013? Uh, Previously, students were overwhelmed by many matter from teacher in order to get knowledge, only knowledge. The system of just knowing without fire understanding best nor good skill and acceptable. The attitude was also not in fire concern. This is why we want to, to give to the student not only the knowledge but also the have also skill and attitude one. The, the change in the curriculum 2013, first Delivering three competencies to the student, uh, attitude, skill, and knowledge. The second, reducing number of subjects. In elementary school, we taught 12 subjects to the student. 12 subjects. We reduce it until six subjects. Subject because there is no time for students to, to, to know each other and to other uh, activities. Even though Six subjects in elementary school. We we construct the books only two books has to has to bring by the student every every day to the school because in other five subjects we make a thematic integrated books, not in each subject each book. Unlike in all curriculum, twelve subject has twelve books. Twelve subject has twelve books. And that, that is why uh, all student in elementary school he has to bring the big bag, the big uh, bag to the school, because many many books has to be bring every day to the school. In the new curriculum, only two books they 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 have to bring to the school, because six subject uh, need only two books, uh, one subject for religion and five subjects we make uh, integrated uh, thematic uh, books at the time. Another significant change of the curriculum, we taught the student active-based learning. Students shall start the subject by observing, questioning, trying or experimenting, thinking and communicating. Yeah. Uh, unlike before, when the teacher come to the enter to the class, teacher give a lecture from the beginning until the finish the, the subject. In this curriculum, the teacher is only as a facilitator. If uh, give a topic to the student, the student will discuss and later on they they, they present in the class. Uh, that is why we 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 construct active based learning by start by observing questioning, trying, thinking, and communicating. Every subject has, uh, has to be like this. The fifth, shifting from all system teacher-centered learning 
So then we'll be able to find the knowledge by practicing, uh, questioning, uh, observing, questioning, uh, trying, thinking, and uh, communicating. Applying uh, OQTTC or 5M in our uh, country, students are able to uh, attitude, skill, and knowledge. Skill, ASK should be make students enjoy class all the time because they are uh, practicing the subject. Practicing subject. They are, the student uh, observe, the student uh, question each other, and they, they make a conclusion uh, among themselves in, the, in this curriculum. Uh, this is a socialization of K2013. Because at that time, not all people in Indonesia agree about the, the curriculum, about the agreed curriculum. We have to convince them that this curriculum is better than all the curriculum. I have to convince the school, I have to socialize in TV. Yeah? In TV, we have to, to make a, what do you call that, the dialogue with other parties. This is a, one of the senior teachers uh, who like the curriculum. We, we bring he, her to the TV and they, we ask her to speak in front of the, uh, in the, TV, in the TV program. This is a socialization of the curriculum to the teacher training. And this is a seminar of 2013 and also the other program. This is meeting with parliament because even though the curriculum is not uh, uh, what do you call it? It's not duty of the, the parliament. We have no need to ask a approval from the parliament. Since the, the budget to implement the curriculum comes from the, the, the parliament, we have to convince them that the curriculum needs to be implemented in our country. So we have to convince them in parliament. Uh, at that time, once a month, we have to report to the parliament what is the progress of the curriculum construction in our Ministry of Education at the time. This is a model of uh, learning. Before the, the teacher comes to the class, they give a lecture. In this curriculum, the teacher is not giving the, the material. The students discuss uh, among them, I think only five students per group later on, the student the itself will present in the class. This is the model of the uh, lecture in the curriculum uh, 2013. Uh, implementation of the K20. Now, uh, we can say that some area in many provinces in Indonesia already implemented K20. K 2013 system in the school. Yeah. New minister, because uh, in Joko Widodo era, there are two ministers of education already. The first, Pak uh, Anis Paswedan, and this is the second, Pak Muhajir Effendi. In the first ministry of uh, education era of Joko Widodo, uh, a little bit stop about the implementation uh, K. 2013 because he doesn't know very well about the concept of the uh, 2013 and the new minister uh, knows about the, the this curriculum and he knows already he will continue uh, K2013 implementation in all schools in Indonesia. I believe that the hard work and building good teamwork will give us the optimum result in implementation uh, of the curriculum. Uh, I think this is uh, all of my presentation for this afternoon. I hope after this uh, there is a what you call the question and answer. I will answer what the, the floor wants to know about the K20 and Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.